Hi, welcome to 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 learn. Interesting facts about Dayananda Saraswati. Nobody can produce knowledge. Knowledge is the accurate appreciation of what is. The teacher throws light upon something which is already there. If an object I want to see is a completely dark room, all I need is light to see it in. The light does not produce the object, it merely dispels the darkness so that I can see it. A light in a dark room produces neither the room nor the objects in it, it only reveals what is. Shed by Swami Dayananda Saraswati The year was 1838, the place, the Shiva temple at Ankara, a town in what is now Marvi district of Gujarat. It was the night of Mahashivaratri when devotees were expected to fast and spend the whole night in the prayer. Among the worshippers was a 14-year-old boy, Mool Shankar or Moola as he was called, and his father, Karsanji Tiwari, who was the Tasildar of Tankara. Initially, the devotees chanted Shiva's name with the great favor to beat the drums and hand claps but by midnight most of them including Karsanji had dozed off. However, Mula was determined to stay awake all night. All of a sudden he saw something that really shocked him. A couple of rats scurried up to the Shivalingo and boldly began eating up the offerings placed in front of it. For a few moments the boy was too stunned to react then recovering his wits he shook his sleeping father crying father wake up look the rats are stealing the sacred offerings however his play did not have the expected effect karsanji merely answered sleepily never mind you go on chanting the mantras mula was rooted to the spot in hat and disbelief he could not continue the worship doubt assailed his mind Why doesn't the all-powerful God rise to protect himself against these impudent rats? He wondered how can one so helpless protect us who worship him? Surely there is no God inside the idol. He had many questions but there was no one to give him answers. He returned home and broke his fast before dawn. The boy who turned against idol worship at such a young age was later to become Pharisee as Dayananda Saraswati, the founder of Arya Samaj. He was a nationalist to the core who fought against the hypocrisy and prejudice of his day and a great social reformer. Dayananda was born Mool Shankar on February 12, 1824 in a wealthy and devout family of Tankara in the principality of Mavi. His father Karsanji Lolji Tiwari was a highly influential man who as the Tassildor of Tankara had been granted a troop of horses by the ruler as a mark of honor. Both he and his wife Amri Boy were staunch devotee of Lord Shiva and wished to raise the son too in the Shaivita tradition. Education Mula's education started at the age of five. Three years later, his thread ceremony was performed. He proved to be a very bright student. At an early age, he had mastered the four Vedas by 14. He could recite from any of the ancient Indian texts and could even discuss philosophy with scholars. His sister death. Two years later, something else happened to strengthen his decision. His younger sister, whom he loved dearly, fell a victim to cholera. Her death left the youth shattered. What he had seen a young and innocent girl done to deserve this fate. Soon the girl's tragic death was forgotten and the rest of the family went back to normalcy but not Mula who began thinking deeply about life and death. He asked his uncle many questions to which the latter had no answer. 
troubled by his brooding and withdrawal from his surroundings his parents began thinking of getting him married he was then 19 years old suddenly tragedy struck again and this time it shook mula to core of his being his beloved uncle succumbed to an attack of cholera the death of his sister had made him move away from worldly life this aversion became stronger after his uncle's death the decide to eschew worldly pressures and attain what was enduring to root in his mind mula's growing detachment did not escape his parents eyes the issue of his marriage which had been postponed on account of his uncle's death was brought up once again leave home mula realized that he was could not let him get trapped in the householder life but he could never convince his parents of his intentions there was only one way out he had to leave home A chance meeting with the village saint was a milestone in his life. The saint taught him meditation and yoga, urged him to wear saffron, and initiated him as a long life, wished as a lifelong calibate with the name of Suddha Chaitanya. After that, he returned to the life of the wanderer. Then one day, on the bank of Narmada, he met the Swami Purnananda, a profound scholar and ascetic the swami initiated the young man into the holy orders thus mulshankar became swami dayananda saraswati dayananda remained with swami purnananda for a couple of years he then went to anya dwaraka and from there to kashi where he learned the various systems of yoga After 12 long years of search Dayananda heard of an old sage named Virjananda who lived in Madura Though aged and blind he was said to be unparalleled in wisdom and knowledge Dayananda went to his ashram on the bank of river Yamuna When the sage asked him what he wanted Dayananda answered that he sought spiritual enlightenment The sage asked him, Do you know grammar? Dayananda replied, I have studied Kaumudi and Saraswata. That is two famous texts of Sanskrit grammar. <coughs> Virjananda curtly said, If you want to learn from me, go through those books into the Yamuna and then return. Those were the days when printing was uncommon and manuscripts of the Sanskrit texts were rare and valuable. But without the least hesitation, Dayananda took his precious books and threw them into the swirling waters of the Yamuna. He then sat at the master's feet to learn everything afresh from him. It was no easy task. The blind old sage was an irascible man. who subjected him to the most rigorous of test and punished him severely who subjected him to the most rigorous of test and punished him severely for the sightest lapse however dayananda was an exemplary pupil he served the guru devotedly doing all the mental chores around the ashram and bearing even his beatings with extraordinary patience In this manner over two years passed, finally Virjananda was convinced that his people now know everything that he had to teach him. It was now time for him to go out and disseminate the light of learning in the outside world. Swami Dayananda set about his mission in right earnest, giving public lectures where he exhorted the people to take pride in the nation and rise against social injustice and ignorance naturally the conservative scholars were up in arms against him he fought against untouchability idol worship and injustice against women and exposed the evil motives of preachers who were fooling innocent people in the name of religion He advocated education for women and widow remarriage and opposed bigamy and child marriage. 
<coughs> Gradually, Swami Dayananda's reputation as a social reformer spread far and wide. In 1875, he set up the Arya Samaj or Society of Virtuous Men with the threefold objective of imparting true knowledge, bringing about social justice and freeing India from foreign rule. He toured the country extensively and addressed many meetings. In 1875, he wrote his masterpiece, Satyartha Prakash, The Light of Truth, in which it in which is contained the essence of his philosophy. The Maharaja of Jodhpur, Eswan Singh, was among his disciples. One day, while visiting him, Dayananda found him in the company of a dancing girl named Nanhi John. He rebuked him sharply for this moral transgression. The rebuke had its effect. The Maharaja dismissed Nanhi John from the room and apologized to the Swami. Nanhi John was furious and decided to take revenge on the man who had caused her humiliation. She entered into the conspiracy with the British who wanted to eliminate the Swami because of his role in inspiring Indian nationalism. According to the plan, the royal cook was bribed to add powdered glass to the Swami glass of milk. After drinking the milk, Dayananda fell ill. The anxious Maharaja engaged the best physicians of his kingdom and called in other famous doctors to examine him. However, his condition steadily worsened. Seeing his agony, the cook could not bear it any longer. He fell at Dayananda's feet and confessed, the, and confessed to his crime. But the Swami, instead of punishing him as he expected, gave him some money, saying, Take this and flee this place quickly. If the Maharaja comes to know what you have done, you will be punished with death. So go away and make a life for yourself elsewhere. Such was Swami Dayananda's nobility. For many days he suffered excruciating agony caused by a grown glass inside his intestine. intestines. Finally, at Admir on October 30, 1883, he breathed his last. India thus lost a great patriot and social reformer. However, his influence lives on to this day in the form of Arjit Samaj, which has its branches all over the country, and the hospitals, community halls, and libraries set up by his followers. For reference book, please go through the description section under this video. Please subscribe us if you are not subscribed already. Thanks for watching. Thank you.